What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Kicks Reasons channel. For today, we have a shoe coming from the early 2000s. Not my favorite time for Reebok since their questionable designs and some business decisions led down to ultimately the company being sold to Adidas. But nevertheless, that's a good addition to my collection and it's a good history piece to talk about. Right in front of you today, we have the Reebok Basketball Dime Dropper. In this uh, loud name, we are looking at quite simple actual shoe. Nothing too crazy and in this almost blacked out colorway, they're so muted, you can't even notice them uh, for, from a long distance. The only slightly colored parts of this shoe are the logos. On the side, we have the Vector logo, which is this kind of silver. And on the tongue, we have the RBK, which again, not my favorite touch. This logo was at the time when they, sh they shortened Reebok to RBK was, was, was a bad decision. Now, let's be honest, that was a bad decision. Uh, the other thing to notice about these, just like many other shoes from that time, we have this squared off toe. Uh, Reebok was doing that, Nike was doing that, Jordan brand was doing that, Adidas. I'm not sure what was the deal with this. It was kind of in fashion at the time. I'm glad it's gone because this looks unnatural and crazy to me. Uh, and we have this giant massive hook and loop strap with the hidden lacing system on the bottom. Uh, and these surprisingly are featuring an actual DMX, which is top loaded IPAC DMX. Uh, one pod on the heel, one big one on the forefoot and a transition bridge. Pretty much what they're putting today in some of those DMX shoes, um, like the Answer 1, the latest edition. They replaced completely the uh, 10 pod DMX and they put the top loaded IPAC for some reason. Well, monitor reason again. Every time I say some reason, it's money. So take it the way it is. Tiny logo on the hill. Hopefully the camera picks that up. It says DMX right there. And you're gonna see them in close up. I'm gonna do a quick uh, kind of comparison to another shoe that you might be familiar looking at this one and thinking, this is awfully familiar to this one. The Allen Iverson's Answer 11. And you'll see so many similarities with these shoes, with the logos, with the shape. Uh, with the toe box, with uh, pretty much anything you can think of with the giant uh, hook and loop strap. And oddly enough, this one, the Answer 11, doesn't feature DMX. It has DMX foam, but this step down shoe has actual DMX. So re again, what was Reebok thinking at the time? It's kind of odd. Taking a closer look to the dime dropper. Uh, obviously, those of you that are familiar with their designs of that time from 2003, like early 2000s for Reebok, you'll recognize this silhouette that is very familiar to this one right here. The Answer 11, the 11th generation of Answer for Allen Iverson. You see how similar they are. We have the pretty much the same logos on the side. We have uh, pretty much the same hook and loop strap that is going across the midfoot section. We have this, uh, at the time, everybody was doing these kind of outsoles and midsoles covered by the upper. Not a huge fan of that design, but similarities are there. And if you look at the toe box, they're almost exactly the same with that same overlay right here on the toe box. Clearly the designer was the same, but there's definitely some significant uh, differences as well. The upper of the, well, obviously this is the Zoom edition, so it has a little bit more kind of a luxury feel and has a ton of more details. But one of the things I want to point out is if you look at here, it says DMX foam and the Answer 11 doesn't feature any, any real DMX, which is uh, puzzling a little bit to me, uh, where with the dime dropper, let me see if I can bring the camera closer and show it to you guys and see what exactly I'm talking about. Down in into the shoe base, you'll see the outline of the DMX eye pack the heel unit and kind of bridge extending all the way down towards the forefoot. So we have large forefoot bridge and smaller heel unit. So very interesting why the step down shoe, which is the dime dropper here in my hands, would have the actual functioning DMX system. And then the flagship for Allen Iverson has just a foam. Very, very curious and interesting de detail. Uh, and if we look at the insoles, this is the dime dropper insole. 
just a regular RBK and uh, Vector logo insole, Reebok Athletics with the arch support. Nothing really crazy to write home about. But if we look at the Allen Iverson Answer 11 insole, it is much better. We have these specific zones here. They're extra cushioned. It's perforated for more ventilation. Overall thickness is bigger compared to this one. You'll see about the twice the size of the regular insole. So this one is a lot better. Uh, maybe they were hoping with these additions that the cushioning is, will feel just like DMX but in fact it doesn't uh, because when i put my foot in here i can feel that i pack air transition and inside here there's nothing like that but yeah um, overall not the best time for reebok uh, early 2000s uh, all around uh, synthetic leather synthetic new books uh, not a lot of ventilation um, muted design, square off toe, uh, all the companies were doing this square off toe at the time, again not a huge fan of that era, uh, that square off toe is no good. Uh, also it's nice, we have you know very sticky and kind of very pronounced uh, traction, herringbone traction, and when we look at close at the toe box, this section is synthetic leather, this section is synthetic, synthetic leather all around, but this small portion right here that connects right underneath the hook and loop strap and goes to half of the toe box, this is actually genuine leather right here. Not sure why they did this, uh, for what purpose. It's definitely uh, strange to see that. And probably the best feature of this shoe is this massive hook and loop strap over your midfoot section to kind of keep you strapped in, uh, in place. And these are more low than actual mid, kind of smaller. Uh, and you see tiny logo right here on the heel where it says DMX, uh, which is correct. Where here we just have DMX foam and the logo is another thing I like. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a strange time for Reebok, but they're definitely comfortable. I can tell you that with a functioning DMX. I stumbled upon these uh, a couple months back on eBay, grabbed them under $50. I uh, just thought, you know what? I have so many other ones and these are kind of part of the history from the time. Why not grab them? DS pair, of course, my size eight and a half. And these are produ produced in uh, August of 2003. So August of 2003 label. Um, yeah, a lot of synthetic letters, a lot of synthetic new books. Uh, the only big and good thing I can say is the traction also has this beautiful uh, pronounced herringbone traction on it very sticky even today so i'm assuming they probably perform pretty good another element from that time is uh, that outsole visible part and then the actual midsole sits in between the upper and the midsole so they kind of extended these uppers back in the day and only kept the outsole so it's good on cord but if you're wearing these casually outside and you know you occasionally hit something or kick something the, the upper gets messed up because the actual midsole is inside and the only thing that protects you is that outsole which is minimalistic and only a little bit of a rubber is visible but anyway a lot of questionable decisions in the design of this one same goes for the design of the answer 11 i have the sample the zoom edition special edition which was super limited unfortunately i don't have the microsoft zoom in it at least it's a good thing to kind of look at them and compare but other than that they're pretty comfortable you'll see them on feet uh, when i put them on the DMX system works and you can actually feel it underneath your foot. The, they are transitioning, not as responsive as the DMX 10 or the DMX 6 on some of the original pairs I have, but still it's something uh, where you put the Answer 11 and you don't feel much uh, other than the cushioning provided by the insole. You're not feeling any air moving, you're not feeling any, any transitioning or anything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, outside of the Having actual functioning DMX and this beautiful uh, and very sticky outsole with the herringbone. The containment is very good with this massive, massive, massive midfoot section hook and loop strap that will keep your foot in place. But that was kind of a popular touch at the time. So yeah, not, not bad at all. I think uh, it's a good, good addition for, for the collection again for, you know, under $50. Why not? Uh, I will keep buying all those shoes that are my size DS or not even DS if they're if I know they're wearable 
and these are wearable actually you know they're not that old but over time i'm assuming this uh, black new book is probably going to start cracking for now it's absolutely fine there's no problem at, with it all whatsoever but uh yeah it's just another collection piece that's pretty much it guys hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new hit that bell notification to get notified for every single video review coming your way and as always guys you have a wonderful day